had to like brush up and like watch YouTube and kind of get back into it for sure. Especially with recording drums. Like I had played drums, you know, since I was 10, uh, but I had never like properly recorded them in a studio. All good, man. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me. Seriously. Here, one sec. I'm going to record on my end too, just in case here. Awesome. Sweet. Cool. And my fan isn't, I have a fan on. It's like really hot here right now. Um, I don't hear it. Perfect. I don't hear it at all. Zoom does a pretty good job of like gating out like exterior noise. I don't know. It's interesting that they have that uh, decent of quality. (laughs) Um, Awesome. Well, uh, I'm Adam and this is a podcast about you and your journey in music. And we'll talk about your new album. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Adam. Sweet. Um, You're, are you currently in Montreal? I saw you're in the Montreal area. Yeah, yeah, I, I live in Montreal. Are you born and raised there? I'm born in Vancouver, actually. Or actually, I was born in Toronto, moved to Vancouver, and then I'm from an island called Bowen Island in BC. Okay. On the west so, coast of Canada. So born in Toronto. Is that born, sorry, Toronto. born in Toronto, moved to Montreal? Oh, wait, sorry. No, no, sorry. Let me follow born, you again here. Born in Toronto, moved, uh-huh. to the west, moved to the west coast as a kid. Okay. And then I grew up on an island called Bowen Island. And that's in the West Coast? Uh, yeah, that's on the West Coast. And okay. then Montreal eight years ago. Awesome. So, so how long were you in Toronto for? Uh, oh, no, I was like just a child. Okay. So then yeah. you move, when you moved to this island, like uh, tell me about growing up on, a, on an island. How close was right. the mainland for you? Or uh, Like the island is a bit of a suburb of Vancouver. Like of the okay. city. It's like a 20 minute ferry ride to the city. So it's not so bad. Um, but, you know, there's a school there. It's like fairly independent. Um, but yeah, like grew up going to elementary school there and all that. Definitely like, uh, the Island stuff is, uh, it's great as a kid, but as you get older, it's good to get into a city. Sure. You kind of know everybody on the Island. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great in a lot of ways for sure. But uh, it's good to live in a city where there's a lot more people as well. Did you go out to the city quite often or did you kind of stay on the Island? Oh, I mean, once I moved off again, like I was like a young kid when we finally moved into the city. Um, but yeah, as as a as a child, I definitely didn't leave the island very often. Okay, so when how old were you when you moved into the city then? Like ten years old. So oh, okay. Was, yeah, yeah. I was just a small kid growing up on an island, and then got you. In, Wasn't there was in the city? Okay, okay, okay. And then what about getting into music? When did you do yeah, that? Getting into music came late for me. Like I played, you know, guitar and drums as a kid growing up, um, but nothing serious. I was never in bands. Uh, I never thought of it as, as a serious thing. It was more of just a hobby. Um, mm-hmm. And then I didn't start like really getting into music and like writing music until I was 20. Oh, interesting. Like, in, in university. Yeah, it was kind of a late thing for me. Okay. Uh, Drums yeah. and guitar, you said uh, early on. Were you uh, born into any sort of musical household at all? Your parents? Yeah, my my family is like definitely very into music, but uh, none of them are like serious musicians or anything. I have aunts and uncles that are though. Oh, wow. Yeah, one of my uncles, he's a great jazz musician, and he started a university program in Vancouver, um, like a jazz specific one. Yeah, That's cool. Were you ever interested in jazz or learning jazz from him? No. <laughs> I thought he was, growing up, I thought he was a carpenter. I didn't even know he was like a jazz musician, which is like very naive of me. Uh, but it wasn't until I went to like his retirement party. But I mean, I was like 13 at the time. Right. So I, I thought he was like a just a carpenter as his career. I had no idea. He was like, a, I knew he could play music. I didn't know it was such a serious thing. That's cool. That is so, cool. When so would you play? <laughs> what did you play first, guitar or drums? Drums first. Yeah. How old were you when you started playing drums? 10 years old. Oh, okay. So it all kind of started when you moved into the city. Exactly. Well, it started, yeah, it started just with lessons and stuff, but it just, I was like, just, a, you know, when you take lessons, but you don't like start bands or like start recording or anything like that. It was like, right. like a lesson style thing. Okay. Um, so it would be like, you know, playing a sport or something like that. Did you do like, like uh, when it came to drums, I guess, were you in like drum line or was it just only no, it was, to it was, it was drum kit, like learning rock songs, just a rock songs. And that was something you just did for yourself exactly. as a hobby. And that was it. Yeah, and that was it. And then you eventually move on to guitar. Was it similar? Yeah, similar. You know, my, it's funny. It wasn't a choice of mine. It was like my parents kind of forced me into it in a funny way. They like bought me a guitar for my birthday. And uh, my first reaction was I, that I didn't play guitar. And I was wondering why they bought me one. <laughs> <laughs> Ulterior motives. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. 
That's do you have, did you have a drum kit at your house? I did. Yeah, like okay. a drum kit. Okay. Was it a, like, I mean, was it something that maybe was, okay, this is getting loud and uh, let's move them on to something a little quieter? Or yeah, were, I, were you I, kind of secluded with the drums? I think the drums, like them being loud, even for me, I felt uncomfortable practicing them all the time. To be honest, I didn't practice as often as I should have. Um, but with guitar, it was like less effort. You know, you didn't have to like go down into the basement to play guitar. Um, sure. But yeah, like I did guitar. I never did lessons for guitar, though. It was all self-taught. But just acoustic stuff, you know, the embarrassing like campfire songs and of playing course. and stuff like that. Were those, uh, I mean, was that something you said you never started a band or anything? Did you write music at all or no? It was just kind of no. learning other people's songs. I, I thought about fun. it. Yeah, just learning like covers and stuff. And I thought about writing, but I just didn't really know. I couldn't comprehend like how to go about it. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, that didn't come until I was like in my 20s, basically. Okay, so you go away to university, or are you going in, in Vancouver? Where, where do you yeah, go to school? I, I went to university for one year uh, at UBC, which is like the bigger university in Vancouver. Um, it's the same university, actually, that has a college radio station that Nardwar has a show on. Oh, here. is that where he came from? Was yeah, that? Yeah. And he's still there. He like he still has a weekly radio show, I think, on Fridays on CITR radio. So no way. Yeah, so that was like Top. huge early inspo for me, for sure. Yeah, oh, man, he's so good. Like just watching his interviews are, yeah, very inspiring. Yeah, iconic <laughs> stuff and the early stuff too, in his early shows and everything, and being able to see him like live at the radio station is very cool too. That's so awesome. I did radio too for a lot of years in in, in uh, here in the United States in San Diego and in San Francisco, and uh, mm -hmm. I remember seeing early interviews with him on YouTube and just how, how who he would interview. I'm like, how did he get like Wu Tang Clan? Like, oh, yeah. all, you know what I mean? Like, just these mind blowing people that he he would yeah, have a chance to interview and mess with in the in the yeah. sense that he does. People like, it. it's like his character. Just people are so into it and. He's like always, it's not like he puts the character on necessarily. It's just him too. So I think it's like pretty intriguing for people. Yeah. He's just, he's such a great researcher to find right. these little tidbits. Like uh, when he, not to go off on Nardwar, but it's just like, I watched one with, uh, but he's funny too. He, he, the, the, the two that come to mind are, he, he interviewed Billie Eilish and he asked her about going to see Green Day with some with her neighbor that she had a crush on or something like that and she's like how would you even have any clue that i you know had a not only had a crush on this person but went to see green day at like you know 12. exactly yeah he's wild and then he uh interviewed little peep and mm -hmm. he asked <laughs> he asked him with with you know with so many lils on spotify what makes you different <laughs> i thought that was such a funny question <laughs> uh okay so he went there not that any anyway moving past nardwar uh, so were you in like there is when you started to get well that's like, where I, into I, music music as far as like writing your own stuff? i mean i was really about that. Into, like listening to music you know i was like a big into like following blogs and stuff like that um okay you know, I, at school i was just going for like science and i hated it uh and then i met a guy in my dorm who like made electronic music and I was like, what is that? I didn't really fully understand how that was done. And so he mm -hmm. kind of showed me Ableton. And then from there, I dropped out of school and was oh, very- Oh, really? Learned. Yeah, yeah. And then I got very lucky because of the grades I had in my, from, uni from like my first year of university, I managed to transfer to another university and get into a music program, like a composition program, even though I had no background in composition. I like transferred in, took a test so I could get like the base level. And then I started from there um but that didn't last very long either i just did two years of that and dropped out again okay um, so but, you like going in you said as a sign you were in, in like the field of science yeah it was your family pretty academic or and no. what was their uh, was my, my their... family's not very academic i mean they they went to university and stuff but they weren't uh they're not academics themselves or anything and they didn't kind of push that like you should go to school for science to well, well, I, I just like thought that's like what you should do you know it's like you can like do math good you should do the hardest thing potentially like for your undergrad which is science in my mind um, no for sure yeah, so that's, I did that. that's how and I went to like, university saying, what can I take that I don't need to take science or math? There you go. <laughs> yeah, And then I quickly realized that after a year of doing it, uh, I figured I could do it, but did I enjoy it? No. So Got it. 
I was like, oh, you know, what would be very challenging for me is music because I don't really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I launched deep into that instead. So you move from Vancouver then, is that when you moved to Montreal? Yeah, I moved to Montreal after I dropped out of music school that I did for two years in, in Vancouver still. Um, okay, so moved, how, what, yeah. what took you from, like, just, just, was it just the love of doing it, like in learning Ableton that brought you to the music school? And then from music yeah. school, how did you, like, what eventually made you drop out? Uh, well, the music school stuff I was learning, it was all based on like 20th century composition, um, mm. which is like where, where composition gets really like crazy heady uh, and moves into like atonal territory and like dissonant harmony and whatnot, which is very interesting stuff. Um, but once we dove deeper into like dissonant theory, uh, I realized that I wasn't too, it was like, I felt like I was back in science. Right. Uh, so because there is a sense of science and math. I exactly. mean, I'll, I, yeah, like with that, underlined like, in music. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like I was learning about like serialism and stuff and having to compose like serialist pieces, which is like fully based off numbers. Um, mm -hmm. That's where like it's sort of void of emotion to a certain extent. At least the stuff I was learning was. Um, like I know there's like tons of amazing like modern composition, but uh, at the time I was just, I realized I was like, you know, I'd rather spend my formative years as a musician learning uh music with emotion sure instead. okay so, see so once you got I to that I point that without, I, I realized i could do that without academia as well okay and were you pursuing that were you putting songs up online i know you had a couple other alias projects prior to That's this I was, one i was making more like like uh like beats and stuff like that at the time um and experimenting more with like yeah like weirder more experimental types of electronic music Okay. Um, not not dance music at the time so I was already doing I already like had sort of a thing going but then when I moved to Montreal after dropping out that's when I started doing more like dance music DJ oriented stuff okay so you you kind of had a thing going when you're in Vancouver Did, was there like uh like a validating moment at that point yet to where you obviously you, you dropped out so was there something that you were able to be like you know what? I think I could really pursue this as a career I was just DJing a lot in Vancouver. Um, okay. I wasn't touring yet, but I was doing like throwing a lot of parties and say promoting at certain clubs and, you know, bringing people in from out of town um, and doing sort of after hours type, type like warehouse party things as well. Um, so I realized, you know, I was making uh, like a living wage off doing that too. So and how did you get involved in that? Just I mean, networking just from going out and meeting people and networking. And yeah, there was, I mean, obviously there's very like tons of different mentor type figures in my life through that time too, that I met from going out. Um, but it felt all very natural and just like through the social scene really. Okay. And yeah. then you moved to Montreal, which is a totally new territory for you. And yep. not only that, like you probably, I mean, you, if you built something in Vancouver, around these parties and getting people to show up there like what's the likelihood that you're going to get them in montreal yeah. it'd be a totally different crowd totally and i didn't really know many people when i moved here i knew uh just like a very small handful of other people that did what i did okay uh, so i just knew that it was a city that had more uh potential for what i wanted to do i guess vancouver can be very corporate and a lot of the clubs and venues there it's like just a lot more money involved um, mm -hmm. and I realized that wasn't, I wasn't really making the right type of music to succeed in that sort of world. Um, and so moving to a place more like Montreal, which is more of a DIY type scene, um, I found that more intriguing. Sure. And do you just uh, right away, just go out and try to meet as many people as you can and yeah. try to get booked on yeah, various. I drove, I drove out here with two friends. I, that's how I moved here. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And then I moved in with a buddy. And then just from there, I started, I mean, I, I knew some people, you know, from the internet, it was all like SoundCloud slash like other internet friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then also Montreal is like much closer to other cities than Vancouver is. Vancouver's a bit of an island on its own, like Seattle right. would be the closest. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's kind of just above Seattle on the West exactly. Coast. And even from there, like, you know, Seattle, Portland or whatever, for like electronic music that's not the most like hot scene you could probably imagine there's great right. stuff going on it's just not you know uh, as big as say like montreal toronto new york mm -hmm. sort of could be and also montreal is much closer to europe uh when it comes to flying than vancouver is too oh so, sure sure yeah so when that it was like the idea of being able to tour uh was also 
uh, like an integral part of like wanting to move to Montreal. Okay. So you get there and uh, what was the, then I guess from, from there, what was the first big moment that continued you being like, this is where I, I, I know that this yeah, yeah. is what I need to be doing was the big validation. Uh, I mean, I put out, so that's when I put out my first like full length type record, uh, which was in 2014. Okay. So I did that, like I had just moved here and then I released a record. Uh, and that record kind of put me on the map of being able to tour. That's like when I got recognition in Europe and whatnot. And how uh, did that happen? Just via SoundCloud? Yeah, I, it was out on a label called 1080p. Uh, it was this tape label that was kind of happening, I think, from 2012 till 2015 it existed. Uh, but they put out tons of different releases and kind of kickstarted a lot of different people's careers in like the electronic music scene. And how did they get a hold of your, your record? It was a friend of mine that ran it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So again, it was like another social thing. Um, and yeah. And then this full length was sort of the first of like the first record of mine that I did it sort of in this different style of music. Uh, and that being more like house music y style of music. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so you you put out the, that record and then that allowed the opportunity because it was well received with people what, exactly. online and everything it was yeah. doing well streaming and and it was well received. Like, I mean, this was also pre Spotify. Uh, okay. so it was like pre-streaming was, was it like blog like high machine that yeah, type of situation it was a lot more like Bandcamp and uh band camp and like even it was like a tape label so tapes were actually quite popular at the time it was like a funny there was like a three-year window at the beginning of the 2010s that i feel like tapes were like really popping um, i remember that i yeah. do yeah so this was the, the one. cassette came back and it was like yeah. huh and the cassette but like really was the format for this style of music at the time I felt and vinyl, but like, this is, I didn't even put this record out on vinyl. Uh, really? It was just yeah. only cassette. It was only cassette. Cause that was the thing. This label was known just for doing cassettes. That's cool. I remember I was, I skateboarded growing up and that was the funnest thing to do is like make little mixtapes and oh, then yeah. bring your little, you know, bring your boom box or your ghetto blaster to the, to the skate spot and just be and play whatever it was you know dance music a lot yeah. of hip-hop i mean um, that yeah that, i mean releasing on this label got me back into collecting tapes and stuff too which was awesome that's cool that really is cool perform. yeah and so you what was it like touring for the first time and, and going across you know the world essentially it was like pretty i i got lucky the first tour i did i did with two friends that were also on the label oh so wow I, I just like, interviewed them I'm, like uh like two weeks ago or a week oh, ago. Oh, no, sorry. Not not, not the band oh, Two Friends. No, oh, I thought you yeah, meant yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the group Two Friends. No, no, no. The, this was with uh, just two friends of mine. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but you yeah. know Two Friends, the group, though? So yeah. I'm not... Oh, just, they're... I'm thinking of this group that I know from Australia called Two People. Uh, uh, two two friends. friends were from L.A., but they're a, a dance. They're the same thing. They're like a DJ, electronic yeah. music. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyway, it would have fit right in your genre. It would have, it would have made total sense for you to tour, to yeah, tour with, with, with them. <laughs> but no, it was two, two other friends. Uh, oh, got you. Okay. That, that I toured with. So that was like a nice primer for, you know, seeing how it worked with DJing as a, as a DJ in, uh, or sorry, touring as a DJ in Europe. Um, okay. And that was in 2015, like the fall of 2015, I think. was and the first idea. Electronic music made it there so much faster than here, right? I mean, it was a yeah, big I mean, deal. Like, electronic music has always been a big thing in the States, too, because a lot of it originates from, say, like Chicago and New York or uh, yeah, Chicago, New York and Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of it being like a widespread scene with like a touring circuit uh, for artists at my level, being like not super successful musicians, but like, you know, being still on a on a smaller level, you could still hold a tour in Europe, which Got is it. which you can't do in the States necessarily as a DJ, I find. Uh, it's a bigger country and just a very different touring market. Um, sure. Yeah, because each each market in each state has a different kind of demo and scene that you got to yeah. break into. Yeah. And getting around is like much further. You have to fly like expensive flights all the time, whereas in Europe, you know, there's very cheap flights, there's trains, there's all sorts of ways to get around. Right. Uh, much easier. Even a place like the UK, you could just tour the UK for like a couple of weeks even. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's so many, place. yeah, so many towns and cities that are, yeah, up tons all the way up. And it really countries, too. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, so getting introduced to that, I realized that was where like my music really worked, I guess, versus North America. So I continued to live in Canada, but I spent a lot of time in Europe from 2015 till 
like the pandemic basically oh so, okay yeah, so for five years i was spending almost half the year each year in europe wow and then the pandemic happens and uh had you already started working on your new album or your was, debut I, album i had like tons of uh sort of like sketches in the mix and stuff and some lyrics written um but i hadn't like recorded much of much of it at all um yeah like some of it had started in 2019 but not okay. like I, I didn't really realize it you know like i'm always like writing random sketches and stuff so uh some of the songs that made it on the album were from sketches from like 2018 2019 Oh, okay. Well, and the sound prior to that was you said that was much different. Were you writing lyrics and and having it this, like a full production, or was it more just electronic dance, like dance? Oh music? yeah, I I had never written lyrics before. Um, oh like, wow! This record is the first time I had ever written lyrics. But what I always, was that like? Was that terrifying, or was something? Yeah, it was very terrifying because when it came to like, I guess some of the songs I wrote about like things that I was I wrote it like in the moment kind of thing while I was recording which is cool. Oh, wow. But, uh, that is cool. That was, that's rare that that gets to happen. That was maybe for like one or two songs, whereas all the other ones were much more of a slog. And uh, luckily I like write a lot of stuff down while I'm traveling and whatnot and have done that since like, yeah, 2015 or whatever. So I could pull a lot of ideas and stuff for lyrics from those notes. What Which made you decide to go that route with actually singing? Or do you sing on the record too? Is that your voice yeah, on yeah, some of the yeah. songs? Okay, because yeah, that, my voice on all the songs. Okay, cool. That's what I yeah. thought. Um, you like have some features. You have some features yeah. too, though. That's why I was curious. Exactly. Uh, but the rest of it's just all you, mm -hmm. voice, everything. Whoa. Voice okay. Everything. Yeah, like the only features, like I had like some members from the band Tops. Um, mm -hmm. They do some backing vocals, and then Jane, the lead singer from Tops, she sings like one of the main hooks in one of the songs as well. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, it's all me singing. And then my friend, I also had a friend play saxophone on the record, but then every other instrument and stuff was all me. Wow. And where did you build, did you build the song? Like you're in, I've just seen the video of you with when you have the vinyl that you get, that you put out, like the yeah. actual vinyl and you're kind of just wandering around this building. Yeah. It's I'm, like, I'm I'm in the building now too. Oh, you are. So is that yeah, your yeah. studio? Did you record yeah, the, in there? Did you record yeah, that record in actually, there? I recorded this record in a much smaller room in this exact same building. Uh, like it's below this room I'm currently in. Uh, oh wow! But it was like a windowless box, like a twelve by twelve room. Uh, yeah. And I've had a studio in this building for a bit. This building's been around for four years now with different artists in it. Um, so yeah, I recorded it all here. And at the time I was collecting like a lot of different gear because, you know, I didn't own guitars or bass guitars or drums or anything when I had started out the record. Um, but then I collected and collected during that time. With that knowledge of drums growing up, was that something that was easier and then knowing how to play guitar a bit like of you course, do all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah you were yeah, able like to, I was, to bring you know, that onto the record. I had to like brush up and like watch YouTube and kind of get back <laughs> into it for sure, especially with recording drums. Like I had played drums, you know, since I was 10. Uh, but I had never like properly recorded them in a studio, which is recording drums and playing drums are two completely different. Oh, things. yeah. How you mic them up and everything. Micing them is crazy. And then also just playing to a click is like such a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> crazy. So that yeah. like I, I when I first recorded some of the drums for this record, I went to a studio like a four hour drive away from here, like in the wilderness uh that this guy uh jonas has set up it's like such an amazing studio but i recorded drums at his studio because it was all nicely mic'd and everything so i didn't have to go too deep into that myself like i didn't mm -hmm. have to buy a bunch of mics and whatnot um but then i just had to like play the same basic loop for hours and hours to get it right it was so funny oh man uh yeah. what, what made you decide on doing a record that was all it was or all the instruments on it like live instruments like live drums like guitars bass wow. yeah there's like, there's synths and stuff too but majority of the record i guess is like fairly guitar and bass like live guitar and live bass driven wow and what made you decide on doing that and then obviously adding your voice and, and lyrics and everything else I mean, mostly just for fun like it's super fun to play like, to switch things up i guess i've been playing with like synths and drum machines and stuff for a long time now um and it's fun to set yourself up with a challenge and something new. So I knew it would be very challenging and difficult for me to figure out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, again, it was just so much fun to do. So with ha having a fan base, did you were you worried you'd kind of jar them a bit? Like yeah, uh, and I definitely did. Um, <laughs> but 
also it's it's something like uh, this is like a record i wanted to make since i put out that record i mentioned in 2015 that record mm -hmm. was almost leaning more into say like indie or band territory and then after i put out that record in 2015 i kind of dipped deeper into like dance music and techno and stuff mm -hmm. which i'm super happy i did too but uh yeah, I definitely wanted to make a band record right after that one. I just didn't have the resources at all. Okay. So, and now this I, this is the pandemic lead or uh, did that ha like lend hand to being able to accomplish it, that? Yeah, it accelerated it for sure. Okay. Um, because I just had more time. I before then I was just on tour all the time and didn't any time I was in the studio, I felt like I just needed to kind of continue with a similar formula or just you know stick to doing dance music stuff. Uh, and was like a little too. I guess scared to really dive deep into something else um because well, yeah like, i mean it's like yeah. the light your your livelihood right and like in totally and you don't want to lose something that's working yeah something that's working or losing momentum uh which is like totally what i ended up doing like i did definitely lose momentum in the dance music scene that i was involved in like i'm not even though things are sort of back and stuff and you know festivals are back i'm not like djing very often anymore is um, that right we're yeah, about not playing live playing live yeah so i'm starting to like i have okay. some shows booked this month and that's like the whole plan of this you know i feel like it's like starting from scratch again um you know i've done this before so uh i know what it takes but it definitely takes some sacrifice for sure yeah do you mind doing having to start over is it kind of frustrating like oh. ah, you know i built this whole thing and now i've got to kind of i mean i'm not, it's definitely it's like you yeah it like really checks your ego in a lot of ways which is cool because sure. you know i I'm like 30 now and I, I think it's definitely good to kind of take a refresher and check yourself in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad I did that. But yeah, with the DJ, like I'm still am like even next weekend, I'm going to Palm Springs to DJ this festival for two weekends. Uh, but that's still, I'm not like on a touring circuit or anything like that these days. Uh, okay. But you'll still do bigger shows like I'll, that. I'll, what what festival is happening in, in, in it's called, it's called Splash House. It's oh. like a sort of bigger EDM type festival. I'll have to check uh, it out. They just had a pretty big one in uh in Riverside County okay. EDM thing, but um obviously Palm Springs is known for Coachella, so <laughs> I was curious. Yeah, yeah, it's like an what? it's a Golden Voice thing. It's like done by the same people. Oh, rad, cool. Yeah. So you're yeah, doing that? I'm doing that, but I, I like with the live. I much like what I'm trying to get going here is the band, like doing the live stuff with the band, mm -hmm. um, which I have like we've been rehearsing and everything. Uh, but our first like real show is at the end of this month in Montreal and Toronto. Wow, that'll be exciting. Yeah, it'll be super fun. Um, obviously, you have to take a different approach than your DJ sets. Yeah, like, so to being you know DJing out to a festival of people versus playing, pro um, you know, a show with a band. Like, uh, like how do you kind of re you know rethink? your your approach there is it hard yeah, to I mean, do it, it it was definitely it was hard to do and hard to think about when i was making the record but then i was very lucky because my friends tops like the band um they invited me to play bass in their band on tour uh which i did we did like a 30 day tour in november last year in the states oh, wow and then did another like two month long tour at the beginning of the summer in europe so I got to play like 70 shows. Uh, got your uh, chops up as far as like being on stage and stage presence and all and how that all kind of works. You know, I've spent a lot of time on stage before, but in a very different way. So right. it, it really helped seeing, you know, just the overall process of like how a touring band works, um, mm -hmm. which is not really an experience I've had before. So I was very lucky to have them, you know, take me under and show me the way. Do you go by just Patrick Holland on your EDM stuff, even when you're doing like these festivals yeah. coming up? Yeah. So is there going to be like a disclaimer? Like, you know, when people see your oh, name, they it, might be. It'll be like Patrick Holland, like DJ set is the thing. Oh, OK. Yeah. Gotcha. But like this festival booking happened like before this record was out and stuff, too. So but from now on, it'll be sort of split up into in a way. But I won't be like I don't have plans to do like heavy DJing touring like I used to. Sure. So it'll do become you, more band focused, I guess. Do you think you'll play any other your your record, or it will it just not fit in the set? I don't think it'll fit in the set. Uh, I mean, it all depends. I always, you know, I travel with a lot of music, so you never know. Or remix, sure. like a, a beat remix of one yeah, of the songs. Yeah, I thought about doing like I want to do remixes and sort of uh, edits of the songs to fit in that sort of atmosphere for the future. Uh, I think that would be cool if you had your yeah your 
obviously you're a great producer and, and songwriter. You can do both worlds. So having, you know, <laughs> Patrick Holland remix of a Patrick Holland <laughs> song or whatever, yeah. that'd be killer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, um, I think the album's awesome. It definitely it was wasn't what I was expecting when I when I put it on. Thinking just knowing like listening to your older back catalog, and I was like, wow, like this is such a rad. Because it does have it has elements of obviously a you know electronic synths and and that that mm. that style of wave through it, but not in the same you know regard at all to what your other stuff sounds like. Yeah, I guess like a lot of the sound palette is similar to my older stuff. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Well, That's like, a great way to describe it. Yeah, like the structure and the songwriting is definitely different. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said to people, it's like you know you can never really get rid of your melodic tendencies uh so i find certain melodies and stuff that are on the new record definitely exist on the old stuff no totally i like i love how you describe that because it's like i know it's hearing your old songs i know it's you still but it's not you and or it is you yeah. Okay, yeah but it doesn't sound like the old stuff but you can there's this undertone to it you know that it's it is a song that you you had you had written and put together exactly yeah very very cool man well are you excited about the show coming up with oh, yeah. just your solo thing like are you, that's probably gonna be a pretty nerve-wracking day or not yeah, so much i mean so i've been practicing so I, it's the band we're gonna do right, right from the beginning is just like it's a three-piece so it's me on guitar and vocals and then my friend amory and she's playing keys and singing and then my very good friend bane who's gonna play bass and then we just have a drum machine for the backing track for the drums um but other than that there's no backing track but we did a like a very intimate uh, performance in the studio last week. Very so, cool. Like 20 friends. So that was like a nerve wracking, good, like first uh, like icebreaker. icebreaker. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, you know, we did it. We did. We did good. Um, so, yeah, we still got more rehearsal to go. But I love it. Well, yeah. that's that's amazing, Patrick. And I appreciate you uh, taking time today to, to chat with me. This has been yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, one more quick question. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, do what you want. Don't let other people tell you what to do, I guess is a big one. Bring me the best word.